lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm bringing you my top 10 non-fiction books of all time. Uh, so first of all if you hear some bizarre sounds in the background it's because my partner is playing Civ 4 with his brothers and they're on speakerphone so please ignore any discussions of trying to take various cities that might be occurring in the background. Today like I said I'm talking about my top 10 uh, non-fiction, I recently did my top 10 fiction so I'll link that down below if you do want to go check it out. Like with the fiction one these were in no particular order because it was difficult enough to come up with just 10 fiction uh, non-fiction books that were my all-time favourites, I cannot possibly begin to rank within that. Uh, there's a nice spread of different genres in this one which will be really interesting. I'm going to try and talk about some of the books that I've talked about the least on this channel first and then come around to some of the slightly more well-known ones because anybody who has been on this channel for a while will know that there are going to be some certain books that have been mentioned multiple times before. Um, you can always try and guess in the comments down below what you think is going to feature on this list before I get to it. The first one I'm going to talk about is Matthew Sayer black box thinking. This is about marginal gains and the secrets of high performance but more accurately it's actually about the discussion of failure and how failure can help lead for like two improvements within specific fields. I credit this book probably with being um, the one that's created the most long-lasting change with how I view the world, uh, which is a very bold claim to make of a non-fiction book. But basically the first half of this book is looking at um, feedback loops in various different industries and how information on when things go wrong can help us to improve to make sure that that doesn't happen again. More specifically it compares the attitudes of American medical systems and um, healthcare systems compared to to pilots and the way that mistakes that cost lives are treated in the two different industries. The later half of it talks about uh, testability and the importance of testability and um, being able to look critically at what you're doing specifically in business but I think that what Matthew said is talking about applies across the board to pretty much all walks of life. Um, it's very light and easy to read. The stuff about the um, airline industry and the medical, like healthcare industry, is really, really fascinating at the beginning as well. So it's not just talking about kind of as a self help style book, it's actually imparting a lot of information and really practical examples that are just generally interesting in their own right of how feedback and information can help us to improve things in various different aspects. Really good, quite short, totally recommend it. A memoir, or more accurately, diary that I really, really love is uh, This is Gonna Hurt by Adam. Okay. These are the secret diaries of a junior doctor, secret Adam Kay's name is on it. Adam Kay no longer works for the NHS but this is detailing five years of his life as a junior doctor within the NHS and his reasons for leaving. Um, because it is literally his, a diary of his time you get a really raw emotional experience but then because it's now been several years and he's been out of healthcare for that long he can go back with footnotes to give a bit more of an objective and kind of stepped back look at his experiences and the two combined I think make for a really emotional and intense reading experience that also can impart a lot of information about the NHS. Um, the NHS is something which is horribly underfunded and this book really looks at the human cost of that um, but also Adam Kay brings to it a surprising amount of light and levity with his style of humour. It's the kind of thing that obviously humour is super subjective so if you don't find him funny you're not going to like this book at all um, so if you don't kind of vibe with it within the first chapter I'd say probably leave it alone but I absolutely adored it. I read it in one sitting and I sobbed at multiple points in it because it's just so emotional in places and very intense. The next one I want to mention is from Art History Now and this is what are you looking at? 150 Years of Modern Art in the Blink of an Eye by Will Gompertz. This is an expansive and very in-depth look at 150 years in modern art, stemming from the pre-Raphaelites, which is really where we consider the dawning of modern art, all the way up to the modern day as of when it was written. Uh, I think it is now probably about five or six years old. It is jam-packed filled with information and really looks at the various cultural and social um, influences on various different art movements and then indeed vice versa. It's a fantastically expansive book that like I definitely need to reread it because the amount of information in it is just slightly overwhelming. I would recommend that if you are going to read this have your phone or something up where you can search for the images of the paintings and various pieces of artwork that it discusses because for each page there will probably be three or four different pieces mentioned and it obviously cannot possibly uh, contain all the different images of the different pieces of art that it's describing so it is worth grounding yourself by having a look at them. It's 
the kind of book that I think would be a really great starting place if you want to learn more about the kind of history of art but I also think that it would be really good if you do have a bit of a grounding just to place them kind of in lines and see the different influences of how they fed into one another um, I think it's absolutely fantastic and yeah an absolute must read if you're into art in any kind of way uh, I'm going to talk about an audiobook now this is Educated by Tara Westover this is very well known on booktube a bit of a booktube darling from I think about two years ago to be honest this is Tara's memoir and it is describing her childhood growing up in a very intense survivalist Mormon family who did didn't believe in um, kind of classic education or anything like that she was completely homeschooled removed from kind of standard society and they were very very big into their conspiracy theories so you get that whole experience it's about Tara being able to try and leave that environment and end up going and studying both at Cambridge and some other very prestigious uh, universities and kind of basically moving into the world of academia but more than that it's also a look at abuse because her family were um, very abusive but in in different ways to the kind of standard potential view of, of abuse that you might have and it's looking at her relationship with them of trying to maintain a relationship but also put boundaries in place to protect herself from further abuse and the different stages that somebody who has been abused would go through when it comes to trying to interact with their abuser um, when it is somebody like a family and a family member you know a blood relation who you do have that connection with them um, it's an absolutely intense harrowing very interesting read and it really kind of came out of nowhere and sort of sucker punched me when I read it um, it's one of the few memoirs out there that I think is it really helped to change my mind about memoir um, because before that I'd really considered them something that I was just not interested in reading and this really changed my view on how much power they can have. I think it's absolutely incredible and audiobook is really really strong. One that I read slightly more recently is Tamed by Alice Roberts. This is the 10 species that changed our world. This is a wonderful um, anthropology and sort of natural history book that as a the subtitle suggests it's looking at the 10 species both animal and plant that we have had an act uh, like a hand in domesticating or cultivating in some way that have then had an impact on how humans have evolved it covers things like the domestication of dogs which were very much kind of self-domesticated to more sort of um, active domestication like horses it also covers various different plants that we have um, had a hand in sort of changing how the plants grow over the years to suit our needs it also looks at some really interesting stuff to do with kind of GM and genetic modification and um, the differences between that and sort of more strictly um, breeding for certain kind of pedigrees and certain tra kinds of traits and the differences between the two and some of the kind of ethical considerations between the two and sort of the implications of what we have going forward to the future. It's a fantastic book if you're really into prehistory or that really early natural history and I think it's a little bit more approachable than some of the big tomes out there that tend to be about this kind of topic. I'm thinking like sapiens and things like that. Alice Roberts has a wonderful light touch with her writing and it doesn't get repetitive even though the processes involved in lots of these things are the same across the board because she brings different aspects into it also because she is covering these 10 different species you can treat each species which is in its own separate chapter almost like its own mini essay which makes this book a lot more approachable and easier to read because it's broken down into these very kind of distinct chunks that obviously do fit into a big overarching picture of humanity and human history as we know it but also is a lot more manageable when trying to approach something like this one that is a Again, a bit of a booktube darling is The Smoke Gets In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doughty. This is uh, Caitlin Doughty's memoir of her early life, basically learning or um, early career. She's um, a mortician and it was her early years working in a crematorium. It's looking at our relationships with death, specifically in the Western world and specifically in America, which is where Caitlin was based, um, but also just has funny and heartwarming and heart-wrenching anecdotes about her time in a crematorium. It's amazing. I love her writing style and I think she's done some really, really fascinating work when it comes to trying to look at the general public's interactions with death, which is something that we will all experience in our life in some way, but we definitely don't talk about very openly in our culture and it's something that she is trying to change um, but it is just you know really lovely seeing her in these sort of younger years as she's really learning the ropes as such in the time that she spends in the very first crematorium that she works in and her time in school um, then knowing where she goes on to she has another book which is called from here to eternity which almost made this list as well but this is the one that really um, sparked me re getting back into non-fiction as well it was one of the early books that I read when I was trying to start reading again so I owe a lot to this book for that reason and as much as because of the subject matter. 
One that I read far more recently is Wilding by Isabella Tree. This is an absolutely phenomenal book which is looking at nature writing and specifically the process of rewilding. So uh, Isabella Tree and her husband owned a farm and they worked that farm very intensively in kind of standard farming practices as they are sort of today um, but it really wasn't becoming financially viable so they made the decision in I think the early 2000s to give the land basically back to the world through the process of rewilding which is introducing keystone species into an environment to then kind of give it back to nature to see how much biodiversity you can create. It's a mixture of their experiences doing that both in from like a scientific perspective but also just the day-to-day -day, um, seeing how the plants and the animal life sort of grows and flourishes, how that's been accepted or kind of interacted with the general public and also discussions about general farming practices across Europe and the world and how sustainable or not they are looking to the future. It's a lovely blend of really quite hard science and also hard um, politics and policy also with a huge chunk of just really lovely nature writing describing you know the plants and the animals and things like that so I think it's a fantastic book that if you are trying to get into science but not too sure where to go for it or if you're someone who like me likes the bit of science but um wants to know a little bit more about some of the memoir it kind of really straddles that line nicely and means it's good for for sort of both people um depending on what camp you tend to fall into it's beautiful just go read it i love it and the audiobook is especially beautiful as well isabella reads it herself and it's fan fan just fantastic another one that i listened to on audiobook and just absolutely blitzed it completely blew me away was the five by hallie rubenhold this is a history book specifically specifically looking at the five women that Jack the Ripper killed and trying to give them back a voice and an identity. So rather than looking at their murders necessarily, it's looking at their life in the lead up to it. Because of this, Hallie's doing a lot of work in terms of like trying to give a voice back to victims and looking at how we understand true crime and why it is that the killer gets um, very much idolised and the victims just become uh, robbed of their own agency and their own story. So she's doing a lot of work there, which is very important and very interesting and definitely good to read about. But the thing that I really enjoyed about this book was it also acts as an amazing social history of the Victorian era, specifically within the working class. And I learned so much about what it was like to be kind of a Victorian woman that I just knew nothing about and it was really lovely to kind of have that other side of things. Like I said, the audiobook is stunning. Hallie has done such amazing work. And what's also doubly interesting about this book is how um, it's been uh, how, how it's been received by the general public and so-called ripperologists who are adamant that Haley, uh, Hallie is absolutely wrong. Hallie's arguing that the standard story of um, Jack the Ripper's victims all being prostitutes or streetwalkers is wrong or something that we can't actually prove and that they, for the most what probably weren't and it's amazing how angry men on the internet get about trying to insist that they were whores and they deserve to die so if you want a, a really interesting kind of uh look at sort of a social commentary around a book as much as the book is about a social commentary in itself check out her twitter and some of the reviews on amazon and just uh yeah fascinating also i'm assuming i'm probably gonna get a comment from at least one on this video because that's what seems to happen as soon as i mention this book anywhere so ripperologist hi nice to see you again it's been a little while i'm assuming you have some alerts set up for a tag on anything to do with Hallie. Leave her alone, yeah? <laughs> the next book I want to talk about is a significantly less serious topic, but that's fantastic because that's one of the reasons why I love non-fiction, and that's It's All a Game by Kristen Donovan. This is a short history of board games and it's as absolutely delightful and heartwarming as you would think a short history of board games is. It's looking at things like some of the early games of chess and how they've evolved, but also more modern games including things like um, the rise of some of the more plastic based games like Mousetrap, um, things like Monopoly which is very infamous because it was supposed to be a scathing indictment of capitalism and instead now just celebrates it um, and was very much stolen from the woman who created it. And just general sort of stories like that, each chapter looks at a different either genre genre of board game or particular board game itself and it does work its way through history and I love little micro histories about like this because they really show the way that very basic items kind of interact with society as a whole and how the various board games that were popular can really look at reflecting back what our values are at the time you know things like um whether Monopoly was popular or some of the the kind of more family life based games it's just generally very very interesting personally um I think Tristan Donovan has a very light touch again with this writing style I really enjoy non-fiction that can be relatively breezy and easy reading even though it is dealing with um 
factual topics and I think he really has that balance lovely so I would definitely recommend this if you are a fan of board games at all or if you generally just like kind of sort of social history history of everyday items kind of an idea okay last one and it's gonna come as absolutely no surprise to anybody did you predict it right from the beginning it's rise and fall of the dinosaurs by Steve Brissette uh, I love this book I love this book so freaking much because I love dinosaurs it's not a secret on this channel you can't see them right now but I have them tattooed on my arm I love dinosaurs and I think Steve does such an amazing job here at giving you a broad expansive look at the entire history of dinosaurs and really opening up um, as like an introduction to paleontology the different areas that you can then go on to read kind of more about um, not only does it double as an amazing look at sort of early before dinosaurs and some of the creatures that would then evolve into them the dinosaurs at their height the extinction event and where they went to afterwards birds discussions of feathers etc etc it's also a really lovely history of paleontology in general and there's some amazing anecdotes about the paleontologists who have made these discoveries and the way that paleontology has either risen or fallen in esteem in pop culture based on things like like Jurassic Park, uh, Ross from Friends, etc, etc. You know, what is our relationship with the dinosaur as an idea in science beyond just the actual history of dinosaurs themselves? I think it's just the perfect starting point. Um, his writing style is really light and fun and I loved it. I loved it so much. Steve, you're a babe. This is great. So that's it from me. Those are all of my top 10 favourite non-fictions. Were there any surprises on this list? Did you predict any of them? Have you read any of them? Do let me know everything in the comments down below. Have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!